Hello and welcome back. And that is where today I want to talk about a recent official update from QNAP on a number of their solutions. Namely, that there are a number of Intel Celeron powered systems like this one, the TS464, that notwithstanding supporting the existing QTS software, now can have QUTS, the ZFS or Zettabyte file system ready software on their rigs. This is a platform that up until recently was only really available on the 1000 quid and above solutions. And now we're seeing it rolling out on some systems as cheap as, you know, 250, 300 nicker. So, one, should you upgrade to this if you're an existing QNAP user? Or if you're on the verge of getting your new QNAP system, should you be choosing the ZFS option rather than the EXT4? And that's what this video is about. I'm going to go through the pros and cons. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the implementation of it on these solutions here, because there are a few small differences between QUTS running on these Intel Celeron systems and ones that are running on Intel Core, Xeon, and more. But straight out the gate, is your system or the one you're considering buying actually going to support it? Right now, anything that was released before 2022, 2023, even if it has got an Intel Celeron processor, it's not included. So if you're running a 253A or a 453D, unfortunately, those are still locked in on EXT4. QNAP software there. But if you own the following devices in the TS uh, X64 series, that's the 2, 4, and 6 bay, then you've got the 253E and 453E. This also extends, by the way, to the rack mount devices in the uh, 6, 4 series. On top of that, you've got things like the little compact M.2 device there and even the 3 bay device. So give or take, there's about 9, 10, 11 different devices. And they do look like they're going to be expanding this out. But one of the earliest indicators of this immediately is it wouldn't surprise me if the QUTS platform becomes the standard for a lot of QNAP devices moving forward there with the next generation whenever that arrives. Uh, when I went into my QNAP NAS and went in for a fresh installation, I will say that when I did boot the device up for the first time, it now directs users to install the QUTS by default. The ZFS version of that software, if you do go for a 64 series NAS like this one on the table, it will direct you by default now to the ZFS platform. That seems that, that is a choice that QNAP are making moving forward. Keep in mind, QNAP does still have a few um, ARM or ARM-based powered, more efficient systems in the market that wouldn't hope to run the ZFS platform. So no doubt QTS is going to continue to be supported solely on those platforms, but it does look increasingly like QNAP are going to be migrating over exclusively to the ZFS platform in the next generation. But straight up, let's talk about why you should upgrade. We will definitely talk about reasons why you shouldn't, but straight away, reasons you should upgrade. Number one, you are moving away from ext4 onto the Zettabyte file system there. Now, one of the earliest advantages and something you can actually get on other platforms that support BTRFS, uh, but you weren't really able to take advantage of in a massive way on ext4 is write once, read many, or worm. The ability to have areas of storage on your system that simply cannot be deleted easily, or in some cases at all for a given period of time or to the end of time. You can set it up in compliance or enterprise mode to ensure that either only a power user admin has any kind of creative editing power on that data, or you can have it set up that literally no one can. You can have it as an open field for a certain given period of time before the locks come down, and you can set it up that that data cannot be edited or deleted for a given period of time. Important documentation, insurance documentation, legal documentation, and that is something you can only get in QUTS on the ZFS platform. Alongside this, there are a myriad of storage and caching benefits. You can support larger snapshot control and creation, thanks to the ZFS and QUTS platform. On top of that, the storage scale-up is significantly high. On the um, EXT4 platform, it wasn't that you weren't able to go to larger capacities, but it wasn't managed as well as you can on the ZFS platform. And although talking about petabyte storage on systems like this is kind of a joke, we can talk about with drive in 20 26 TB, we're able to see a little four bay like this can hit over 100 terabytes of potential capacity. And EXT4 wasn't really made for that in that kind of scale and scale out. Now, on top of that, you've got inline benefits. So, for example, inline deduplication, inline compaction, inline um, compression. All of these are happening in real time as data is being sent to the system and 
Although a lot of these features and facilities are afforded to a lesser degree in XT4, very few of them are available in line as data is writing to the system. Alongside this, the removal of the volume layer. And that is to say that when data is living on a NAS in the EXT4 platform, what you found was your hard drives here on the base level were in what's known as a storage pool or a RAID. With that, on top of that, you had another layer, the volume. And that was kind of the individual volumes or one large volume is where your data was. And those extra layers could reduce performance there, but they could also lead to a little bit of messiness internally with the system. Now, ZFS, I should say, removed the volume layer and you are writing directly onto that pool layer there. Now the benefits are, number one, the RAID pool creation is insanely fast. On top of that, things like RAID resilvering, where if a drive is briefly or temporarily disconnected, it can be absorbed back into the pool in a way that in EXT4 would result in RAID degradation or the loss of your data if you didn't have a sufficient RAID configuration in place there. Also, support of a lot of the Z RAID um, uh, configurations and support of things like triple parity, where you can have three disks of RAID failure protection. That's three little safety nets there in your RAID config. And of course, end-to-end -end checksums, where as data is passing through the system, the system is checking for integrity issues and repairing them on the fly, something we've seen observed in BTRFS, but was never really implemented to the same degree, or at all, really, in EXT4. So there are a lot of benefits to go for QUTS on your QNAP NAS right now, and notwithstanding one of the biggest downsides that I had with QUTS at launch, the fact that it removed QVR Pro with its eight camera licenses is now not a thing. I logged into the system, went into the app center, and I'm pleased to say that it does arrive with Q, um, QVR Pro with the eight camera licenses, even if you are running the ZFS platform, which is mwah, one of the biggest downsides that I talked about before, has now been completely overcome. However, it ain't perfect. And let's talk about some of the reasons that you might not want to or not be able to, in some cases, upgrade to QUTS. Some of the feature set of QNAP's app library and feature set are not afforded to QUTS and the ZFS platform. Probably the, one of the most appealing for many of you is QTIA. QTIA was a means of creating a single storage pool where you could take advantage of this area of SATA storage hard drives and this area of NVMe or SAS NVMe or SATA SSD storage there and meld them into a single storage pool. Now, by doing that, the system would automatically learn what would be the most common access data and then move it to a relevant section. This sounds a lot like caching, but it's not the case. Where in caching duplicates data either uh, temporarily or long term, QTIA allowed for data to be moved to the more appropriate storage area over time as it learned your access patterns there. That is not afforded it to QUTS and the ZFS platform. So if you use QTIA in your system and see the benefits in your editing workflow, your virtual machine deployment and more, you may not want to upgrade to QUTS. Another thing worth touching on is QUTS for at least one of its features requires a minimum of 16 gig memory. With inline data deduplication, which is when data exists in multiple sources being accessed from or to the NAS system, inline or live access deduplication of that kind requires 16 gig of memory. Now, that's not really the end of the world for some of you, but some QNAP devices have rolled out with fixed memory. And in that case, when it has been fixed, it's been fixed at 8 gig. So upgrading to QUTS on those systems will mean you are completely unable to get access to inline data deduplication. So keep that in mind. Also, QUTS on you know, ZFS platform there is going to consume more resources. ZFS is a little bit more resource hungry. That's why lots of users don't really run ZFS on Intel Celeron processors. It's just quite an, an efficient CPU, that's a polite way to put it, to run ZFS. It's not the end of the world, and QNAP have clearly done a lot of streamlining there to get their QTS platform to run on this, but nevertheless, just be aware that QUTS and the ZFS um, feature set it includes is a little bit more resource hungry there. And finally, for many of you, this is going to be the biggest reason to not upgrade to QUTS. You can't just upgrade like a firmware. You have to format your whole gig. You've got to get rid of all of your data and start from scratch. If you have live data on your system or your system is in active daily use, keep in mind that you are going to have to offload your data onto another NAS, onto the cloud, onto a DAS, 
and then format your system back to day one. You have to refresh the whole system and then you can move that data over. Now, for some of you, you may have a backup in place and you're thinking, cool, doesn't matter. Well, it's worth highlighting that your configuration, your system config backups in QTS are not compatible with QUTS. So you may be backing up your system config with your users, your passwords, your authentication, basically your system layout. You can't just back that up and bring that over to QUTS. You will be able to bring some of it that's app specific, but the majority of it will have to be recreated from scratch. So do keep that in mind that upgrading is not simply click update, it downloads the update, and then you reboot the system. There's a lot more layers to carry your data over. Bottom line, the support of the ZFS file system on QNAP's platforms, even at the Intel Celeron level, can only be a good thing. And if QNAP are trying to support multiple versions of their software, that can divide a lot of the resources in the development too much sometimes. So even if it means them streamlining the ARM-based systems to have a more QTS Lite version on there, which I think can only be a good thing, because Sometimes QTS doesn't run great on those ARM systems. If anything, they allow those systems to do too much. I would say that resetting the book and making sure that QUTS becomes the de facto software for most users, I would argue, in the future is going to be a good thing. And with the next generation of QNAP devices almost certainly arriving with an Intel N series processor or higher means that the limitations of Celeron are going to be kind of out the window. Yes, you've still got the restricted lane um, availability on those processors, but they can do a great deal more than the Celerons that came before them. And in that world, a ZFS file system will thrive. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have upgraded to QUTS on your QNAP NAS and it's running on a Celeron processor, let users know below in the comments how it went. Is it working for you? Are there things I've not missed in the video? Do let us know. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.